If you've ever used ESG scores uh, to help make your investing decisions, you're feeling very virtuous, uh, number one. But listen up. Those scores might not be measuring what you think. Christina Partzinevelis joins us uh, now with more. Hi, Christina. Hi, Joe. So contrary to popular belief, instead of measuring the risks corporations pose to the world, like carbon emissions or poor treatment of workers, ESG ratings measure the risk the world poses on the company and its bottom line. Rating providers sift through hundreds of variables, like the ones listed in brown right behind me. Uh, for example, how a company sources water or deals with corruption. They crunch the numbers and come up with a single ESG rating. So I asked the head of ESG at S&P Global why scores just aren't consistent. The metrics and the indicators that companies have to report are changing. Standards take a while to emerge. There needs to be some kind of uh, agreement around what the right metric is. So that means metrics continue to vary. Take, for example, Tesla. FactSet rates Tesla 37 out of 100. You can see right over there on the right-hand side, whereas it gets an average rating from MSCI and a 60 on 100 for uh, Refinitiv. And then if we switch over, over to oil and gas firm Exxon, it scores a positive 74 out of 100, but on FactSet, an average score. And so the scores vary so much. Do they really, though, give us all investors a sense of what companies are doing for the environment, social justice, and corporate governance? I would say that everyone wants to contribute to planetary welfare. I would be uh, skeptical that ESG investing as a category is going to move the needle. The disconnect between accelerating ESG activity and confidence in the results could serve as a wake-up call for companies and investors alike. Joe? Oh, boy. Why, oh boy. Because now I don't know what to do, Christina. You know, I, I had it all planned out. And um, and what was your plan? To, to follow well, to, the ESG scores and invest you know, in ESG funds? You know, just to affect all these high-minded uh, things through my investing. Well, I don't want to invest to try and make money. I, I invest to feel good and to feel, I don't know, just to get rid of a lot of the guilt that I have. And, and, I, I and see just where to, you're going with this right now. But I, I, it's not all bad. They are trying to uh, streamline it. They are science-based targets are creating a definitions. There's a climate task force. So you have all these task forces that are working towards creating these, these one global definitions. But unfortunately, we're still not here, there yet. And these guys that have been rating these firms, a lot of them have been doing it for at least 10, 20 years. So the big question is, why is it taking so long? Do you see any hypocrisy in any of the any of this stuff, Christina? I, I am a journalist, so I stay right in the middle, of sharing <laughs> both sides with you, Joe. Uh, uh, I see where you're saying, but at the same time, uh, I'm just uh, they okay. believe that it's going to get better in the next uh, year or two. However, we are not there yet. The correlation between all of these rating agencies is actually 0.61, if I remember correctly. Right. Let's say we found out, Christina, that four investors that uh, that. All the, the ESG calculations that it, it actually underperforms just normal the S and P or something like that. If you are, if you just want to be an investor, should you accept the lower return to feel uh, virtuous, or what? What do people invest for in the first place? Do they invest for their family's future, for retirement, for what they're trying to do? Or do they invest so they can tell their friends that they're the ESG investors? Well, it's their own personal values, and it's up to them. But you just have a great segue for me because I will be answering that, uh, hopefully next week, the performance of ESG funds and just, you know, how well they do. Is it because they're ESG funds and because they rate high, or is it just happens to be because they're just a little bit more transparent and they have the money to get these ESG ratings in the first place? OK, I'll have that for you. I promise. OK. I mean, I know Bill Gates, you know, he still flies a lot on that big, big jet of his, but he buys carbon off offsets. So oh. the, so the carbon really doesn't count that he puts in because he's, you know, and what's seven million dollars to Bill Gates? Chump change. Pocket lint. Exactly. So he gets to do whatever he wants and lives in a 500,000 square foot house that has a carbon footprint of Denmark, but he buys some offsets. So and you don't see any hypocrisy in, in all this. Anyway. Thank you, Christina. Thank you.